Okay, so you want Excel to generate a list of dates between two dates. I'm going to show you three methods. First method, probably the easiest, but will only work if you have Excel 365. Second method will work for any version of Excel. And so will the third, but it will use a little VBA macro, which I shall give you the code for. So let's start with the first solution that will work in Excel 365. And for this, we're going to use the sequence function. So I'll briefly explain how this works. You've got one mandatory argument and three non-mandatory. So I want rows. Say if I wanted 10 dates, I'd put in 10 for my rows. I only want one column, so I can skip over that because once the default start, well, say I wanted to start at zero. I'll put a zero in there. And then step is the increment you want to take between each number that the sequence function is going to generate. So by default, it's one. But if I said five, for example, you'll see that it generates a list of numbers, 10 numbers, increment of five between the numbers starting at zero. Now, in our example, rows will be the number of dates in this date period inclusive of the start date and end date. Now to calculate that, I would subtract the two dates and add one. You always add one to include both dates. And that tells me that there are 17 days in that date period. So what I need to do is put that calculation within the rows argument. I don't need any columns and I want to start at zero because essentially I'm going to be adding these numbers to the start date. So initially, because I want to return the start date, I want to add zero. The step argument I don't need to use because I want to increment by one. So if I press enter now, you can see that it returns 17 numbers from naught through to 16, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to use those numbers and add them to the start date. Now, initially, Excel is going to return the serial number for those dates. But what I can do is select that column and then apply the date format. And you'll see it now returns the date in that date period. If I changed that date to the 5th of November, it would update my list. So that works in Excel 365. So what if you don't have that version? Well, all is not lost because there is another formula that you can use. Now, if you're using this method, your first cell needs to directly refer to the cell with your start date in. So I'll just write equals C2 there, and that gives me my first date. In the cell underneath, we're going to write a formula, and I'm going to start by explaining the row function. It returns the row number of a reference. So for example, if I reference cell A1, it returns one. And if I copy this down, as the row reference changes, it returns that sequence of numbers. So what I need to do is add these numbers to the start date. Let's say equals the start date, and I need to lock that. And I did that with the F4 key on my keyboard. That should create those dollars in that cell reference. If F4 doesn't work for you, just type the dollars in as I've got them there, plus row one. So now if I copy this down, you'll see that it generates those dates. However, I want the date list to grow or shrink dependent on the start and the end date that I specify here. So how do I do that? Well, obviously, I don't want this formula to generate any dates after this date. So what I can do is I can say if the date that's generated by this calculation is greater than the date that I have in C3, and I need to lock that as well, then what I want to do is return an empty cell. And I can specify that with an empty text string. Otherwise, I want to add one to the date above this cell. So I would say, in my example, F2, the cell above this formula, plus one. I close the bracket, and then copy this formula down the rest of the column, Now, if I change this end date to the 10th of November, you can see that it generates dates up to that end date. So now you have a formula solution for Excel 365 and earlier versions of Excel. So what about a VBA solution? 
Now, if you want to use the VBA solution, I would recommend that you show the developer tab on your ribbon. You can see mine there. If you can't see the developer tab on your ribbon, right click on another tab, go to customize the ribbon and make sure that developer is ticked here. So you'll see a button on the developer tab over here, Visual Basic. You've also got a shortcut key, Alt F11. So if you click on that button, that will open up the Visual Basic Editor. Now down the side here, you'll see a list of projects, which is essentially workbooks that you've currently got open. So I am in book two, you can see that up there. So what I need to do is select that project and then go to insert module. That will create a module within this project. So once you've created that module, you should see a code window on the right of your screen. It may not say option explicit at the top, don't worry about that. What you want to do within this code window is paste in the code that I have provided. So I'm just going to take you through this code. What I've done is declare four variables here. These are storage areas, one for the start date, one for the end date, one for the output cell, and also a counter, which I've called X. So this VBA macro is going to ask the end user to select the cell containing the start date. It will then ask the end user to select the cell containing the end date. And then lastly, it will ask them to select the cell that they want to output their dates to. So within this for next loop, X is initially assigned the value of zero. The maximum value it will be assigned is the difference between the end date and the start date. So on the first iteration of the loop, it's going to enter the start date in the output cell. So output cell dot offset X, in other words, zero, equals start date plus zero. So that's going to be your start date. Then on the second iteration of the loop, X will equal one. So the output cell would be one cell below the output cell specified here. And the start date will be the start date plus one, so the next date. So what it will then do is keep looping until it gets to the maximum number, which is the difference between the end date and the start date. Let's run this macro and see how it works. I'm gonna press play, and it's gonna ask me for the cell containing the start date and then the end date, and then the cell you want to output dates to, which will be here, and then I click on OK, and it returns all of those dates. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.